Thank you for this opportunity to present our uh, uh, abstract with you today. Uh, it's titled Quality Over Quantity, Smaller MR-Guided Focus Ultrasound Lesions That Overlap Patient Fit Normative VIM to Precentral Tracts Improve Quality of Life Outcomes in Essential Tremor. So a number of high-impact studies have established that MR-guided focus ultrasound thalamotomy is an a effective technique at reducing tremor in ET. But the primary motivating question for this work uh, came from a referring um, physician, actually, who sent us patients early on uh, uh, after FDA clearance. And uh, after one or two years of, of following those patients, um, he uh, came back and told us that and I quote, only about half thought that they were better. Now, this was surprising to us based on uh, what we had witnessed with their tremor improvement um, during the procedure. So therefore, we began thinking, you know, are we actually improving, uh, improving patients' overall quality of life with our treatment? Now, optimized patient-reported quality of life metrics um, have been less emphasized in the literature historically. And the best that we have is probably the Quest or the um, questionnaire in essential tremor. So... Uh, on, on, on this assessment, the majority of questions actually ask about tremor and how tremor relates to quality of life. And really, there's only one question that asks about overall quality of life. It doesn't specify tremor related. And it asks, uh, which I've highlighted here in this red box, it asks, overall, how would you rate your quality of life? Zero equals very poor health and 100 equals excellent or perfect health. And when you think about that, that that question is a little bit confusing in, in terms of what it's actually trying to get a patient to answer. Um, so maybe we need a better definition of better and how we ask the question could make a significant difference. So uh, we asked the question in a slightly different way and we said compared to before the procedure, is your overall quality of life better, approximately the same or worse? And this is a sort of a type of a simplified global impression of change metric. And the purpose of the study was just to uh, assess the relationship first between tremor reduction and subjective quality of life, i.e. does tremor reduction predict improved uh, quality of life? And if not, uh, can we explain why certain patients fail to improve quality of life despite good tremor reduction? So the study design is a retrospective case series. Uh, the 62 patient cohort that were treated with MR-guided focus ultrasound uh, remained in the analysis uh, that had greater than 90 days of follow-up and were able to be stratified by this quality of life outcome. And in the first analysis, we just wanted to compare tremor outcomes between uh, these QOL groups. And you can see that overall across these, this cohort of patients, 60% felt they were better, 24% felt they were about the same, and 16% felt worse. Um, and on the day of the procedure itself, you can see that uh, that um, tremor suppression in the form of uh, TRS change pre, which is shown in blue, uh, versus post up, uh, shown in orange there. Um, you can see that all patients had a significant uh, uh, reduction in tremor scores on the day of the procedure, and, and, and therefore this did not stratify the different QOL groups. Now, long term, on the other hand, there is. Um, uh, and again, this is long-term, uh, uh, greater than 90 days at the last known follow-up for each patient. And it ranged between three months and, and 38 months, and I think average is approximately one year. Um, and you can see in the different types of uh, TRSs, uh, in general, there was a, a, um, a trend towards patients who were better or thought that they were better um, in their quality of life metric tended to have a, a higher change in their TRS across the board. However, this is where it gets interesting. Um, the patient's own perception of tremor suppression did not follow that pattern at all. And here, in fact, patients that were worse uh, and patients that were better both thought that they had between 80 and 100% or so improvement in their tremor. So therefore, in this worst quality of life group, uh, it's not tremor suppression that is driving or lack of tremor suppression that is driving their quality of life impairment. Um, so what else is going on there? Well, um, it's likely uh, to be somehow related to their side effect profile outweighing what they perceived as a benefit, even up to 100% benefit in tremor suppression. 
So there are different approaches, uh, certainly, to optimize lesion targeting using tractography. Um, and these sweet spot approaches um, uh, can indeed predict uh, uh, optimal zones, primarily for tremor suppression. They have not focused as much on quality of life. And further, optimal DTI acquisition and fiber tracking algorithms are technically challenging. Uh, they're resource intensive uh, and they're heterogeneous across sites, leading to uh, diminished reliability. So we therefore proposed a new type of um, tractographic approach, which we call the normative tractographic atlas. And in this approach, we actually use the Human Connectome Project data set, which is a high resolution seven Tesla, extremely high resolution DTI acquisition across this large patient, uh, patient or subject group. Um, and uh, in that group, we then uh, created a seed in the VIM using an atlas-based approach and a seed in the, in the motor strip um, and, uh, and calculated the streamlines between those two seeds and, and found the region where we had the highest density of streamlines connecting those two and brought that back or fit that back into the patient's own native T1 space. So this is not using DTI data acquisition in a patient-specific manner. This is using a patient's T1 image. And uh, we analyzed post-op lesion volumes, which were manually segmented. Um, and then we co-registered the patient fit normative track uh, and the segmented lesion. And we used univariable, univariable uh, uh, logistic regression analysis to assess the correlation of QOL outcome to lesion volumes, as well as degree of overlap between the lesion and the patient fit normative track. And we did two group comparison, um, comparing the worse group versus the better and same groups um, uh, in terms of uh, what might be predicting the differentiation. So here's a qualitative example of a patient on the top um, uh, showing good or having good quality of life, reporting good quality of life, and on the bottom reporting bad quality of life. And you can see in A1 versus B1, right off the bat, there might be a difference in uh, the size of the lesions. And in A2 and B2, the red indicates the normative tractographic atlas. And you can see that in A2, there might be a higher amount of overlap between the normative tractographic atlas and the lesion compared to B2. Now, of note, both of these patients had a similar degree of tremor suppression. So when we look at it across the cohort, we can see that the worst quality of life outcomes were associated with larger lesion volumes with a very strong uh, correlation there, and uh, less overlap between the lesion and the tract, again, with a strong uh, uh, p-value there as well. And when we try to optimize UDEN uh, index, uh, optimizing sensitivity and specificity on the ROC curve, we get an optimal cutoff of both of these values of less than 143 cubic millimeters for lesion volume, predicting better quality of life, and uh, greater than uh, 895.4 um, uh, uh, DICE coefficient of the overlap between the VIM to M1 normative tract and the lesion, um, predicting better quality of life. And when you compare this to the literature, um, this is much smaller than the lesion volumes that we see on average uh, across, the, across the literature, which, which ranges really from 181 to 335 cubic millimeters. So what we're seeing is that precisely targeted smaller lesions may be the best approach to optimize improved overall quality of life uh, as well as tremor reduction. So in conclusion, um, MR guided focus ultrasound we know is an excellent um, methodology to improve tremor. However, the impact of high food thalamotomy on patient-centric QOL may need to be further emphasized as a paradigm shift away from tremor reduction alone. Um, we find that smaller lesions with high overlap with our NTA network target are associated with better long-term tremor reduction and QOL outcomes. And used prospectively, this NTI-guided targeting approach may be a potentially simple and scalable adjunct to optimize targeting. And eventually, such optimized image-guided targeting techniques uh, may uh, enable us to um, uh, get away from having to have patients awake and interactive and to be able to do this procedure in an asleep fashion, uh, which may lend itself to higher efficiency. Uh, thank you very much for your time.